Hi, I'm Adrian from Micromega Dynamics. In this short tutorial, I'll show you how to replay a Recovip project with the viewer module of the Recovip suite. We'll first open the launching panel of the Recovip suite and observe the Recovip range of projects in the first row. We currently have three Recovip suite compatible sensors the Recovip Tiny, the Recovip Feel, and the Recovip Mint. The use of the sensors modules will be covered in other video tutorials. Whatever the Recovip sensor used, you'll be able to record a project containing all the required information to replay and analyze your measures in the viewer module. A valid project always contains a directory called BASIC with three files in it. Such a project will be called a Recovip project in the rest of this tutorial. So let's launch the Recovip viewer. To open a Recovip project, simply click on the folder icon. Select the projects folder and click OK. If the selected project has already been used with the Recovip suite, you may be asked whether to use the same settings as previously or to keep the default settings. We'll keep the default settings for now. The Recovip project is now loaded and the settings window automatically opens. Let's close it, we'll get back to it later. Now you have two possibilities. You can either replay the project in a dynamic way, as if it was live streaming, or display the entire measure at once. To display the entire measure at once, simply click on this button. The data is loading and displayed. To start the dynamic replay, simply click on the play icon in the bottom left corner. The measure is displayed at real speed. Time domain on the left side of the screen and frequency domain on the right side of the screen. If you want to increase the replay speed, click on the fast forward button. Let's get back to the settings by clicking the settings wheel. We'll take a quick look at the different tabs. The signal processing tab allows you to specify the signal processing to be applied to the different channels. The FFT tab allows you to set up custom frequential analysis. And the analysis tab allows you to compute and display statistics in the time domain window. These three powerful tabs will be more detailed in other video tutorials. The Display tab allows you to select which data is displayed and how it is displayed. For example, I am able to focus on the 10 first minutes out of this 30 minutes long recovery project. I can also decide that only the third channel is relevant and hide the other ones. Now, if I display the measure, I only get the 10 first minutes of the third channel. The next parameter is the visible range. The visible range will define the time period of the moving window in the dynamic replay mode. If I modify this parameter to 1 second for example, here is what I get in the time domain. I'm also able to modify the way that time and frequency domains are arranged. I can split the screen vertically, horizontally, or decide to focus on the time domain and the frequency domain only. The synchronization menu will be covered in another video tutorial. Let's now take a look at the charts features. Right-click over the time domain chart to open the context menu. Here, you can enable or disable the automatic vertical scaling. When enabled, the automatic vertical scaling will always adapt to display the minimum and maximum value of the current visible range. Let's disable it for a moment. There are different zooming possibilities. To zoom on a particular area, Simply draw a rectangle while keeping the left mouse button pressed.
it's possible to zoom back to extents by double clicking on the chart. The scroll wheel may also be used to zoom on the charts. Scrolling with the cursor inside the chart will zoom in the X and Y directions. Scrolling with the cursor on the X axis will zoom in the X direction only. And again, scrolling with the cursor on the y-axis will zoom in the y-direction only. To pan the chart, move your mouse on the graph while keeping the right-click pressed. You can find a summary in the Tips window when clicking the Help icon in the bottom right corner. Let's get back to the Time Domain Chart Context menu and have a look at the other options. Compute FFT on the current range is related with the frequency analysis and will be explained in another video tutorial. Save as XPS or PNG file allows you to export good quality snapshots of your current charts. Let's, for example, focus on this time period and export the current chart as an XPS file. Let's open it and appreciate the quality of the image. Export the current visible range as a new recovery project allows you to create a new project containing only the values of the current time range. That means I can create a project dedicated to that chalk. The new project is stored in the cropping folder of the orig original recovery project. Here it is. Let's rename it shock and let's open it. The last option in the time domain context menu offers the possibility to stack or unstack channels in charts. In my case, the sensor was a Recovip Tiny, which is a 3-axis acceleration sensor. Therefore, by default, the three axes are stacked together in a single chart. If I want to have each channel in a separate graph, I can uncheck the channels. If I want to stack two channels back together, I just need to check it back. Now I can act independently on the X and Y channels. If I want the different charts to have the same time base, I just need to click on the small lock next to the x-axis title. Now, panning and zooming on one chart has the same effect on the other ones. To finish this video, I'll show you how to save the current settings so that you can reload it later and get back to the exact same configuration. Click on the icon next to the settings wheel and click on the Save Current Settings as File button. Give that configuration a name. And save it. Now, if I op open another project with the three axes stacked together in a single chart, I can get back to the previously saved configuration by simply reloading the settings file. Go back to this button and select the first button. 
select the previously saved configuration file and open it. And now we get the third channel in a separate chart. This video covers the basics of the viewer module. For more advanced features, please do not hesitate to watch the other video tutorials.